So today, I'm gonna to talk about something that affects a lot of you. And that is <clears throat> toxicity at work. Bad toxicity at work. It's crept in, it's getting worse. And basically, in my opinion, it needs to stop. I'm a little bit tired of seeing good friends completely and utterly stressed out. I mean to the point where some of them, they just can't go on anymore. For a job, seriously. So I don't know about you, I don't know how you're feeling at work, but uh, yeah, there's just a horrible, horrible toxicity that's crept in. So, so I've tried to understand a little bit about, I'm trying to think more and more, talking with a lot of people, where's this toxicity coming from? And a lot of it is coming from the behaviors of senior management. I mean, horrible behaviors of senior management, <clears throat> massive pressure um, in civil discussions, focusing on the wrong things. That's one of the things that's causing the toxicity. And you see it in terms of the way that it creeps into people's daily lives. Snidey things in the emails, Teams messages, chats, WhatsApps, phone conversations, finger pointing. There's all kinds of things that go on. And it's a slow chipping away at people's mentality. Bit by bit, toxicity drops in. And as leaders, you have a massive, massive responsibility to make sure that you do not allow a toxic environment to come in at your work, in your meetings, in your emails. And everybody down, what I would say is lower in the company, in the hierarchy of the company, your job is also not to allow that toxicity to creep in, in the way that you say things, the way that you do things, the way that you write emails, the way that you finger point back up to the bosses, telling them how it's all their fault and they're a bunch of stupid idiots. And that may be true, but you've got a responsibility to not make sure, that, to make sure that's not toxic. You've got to make sure that it's good, solid feedback that's actionable with things that you want them to do about it. It's very easy just to say things are broken. It's way harder to come up with the solutions of how to fix them. But if we do that, we eliminate some of the toxicity. So someone asked me the other day, you know, what's the problem? What's broken? Why is this toxic environment so pervasive across industry? And I think one of the biggest problems, it starts with things like unrealistic targets. And I don't mean just sales targets. This affects everybody in the organization. Unrealistic R&D targets. You've got to get this product out by then. Unrealistic QA and RA targets. You've got to get these deadlines. You've got this FDA by then. Unrealistic financial targets. You've got to hit this profitability by then. Now the problem is that once these really unrealistic targets creep in, it becomes the norm. And the insidious part of this is the way that they creep in. So if you look at sales targets, it's the old, let's just go for double digit growth. Double digit growth usually infers you want 10% growth this year. Built on 10% last year, 10% the year before, 10% the year before. Is that realistic? Can we just keep growing 10% on bigger and bigger bases every year? I know that some people say, oh yeah, but we've got new products coming out. Most of those new products that come out, they cannibalize the business that's already there. Yes, you think you're gonna go for bigger, bigger market shares. It's just not, it's just not reality. And I'm thinking about a lot of the bigger companies, especially that have been around for, you know, 75 years plus. 
and they've got these super unrealistic year-on-year -year sales increase targets and then what happens is people miss the targets and of course they miss the targets how the heck are they gonna hit those targets you can't keep growing 10 percent year on year on year if you're if you've got 50 percent market share and the major competitor has 50 percent market share it's tiny swings between those percentages man it's hot today but it's not major major gains there's not some giant gain that happens now there are exceptions to that where there's a whole disruptive new industry like surgical robotics who's taking hand over fist 26 percent procedure share year on year so that's that's a different thing but i'm talking about in most of these companies you know be it the beckton dickinson's the boston scientifics the medtronics the j and j's the phillips the siemens what is this thing about constant double digit growth when is enough enough now what also then happens is that people don't hit those stretch goal figures and if revenue runs downhill right so you don't hit your revenue then what happens is you're not making a profit so what's then the natural thing that senior toxic managers want to do because they want to hit their bonus they want to hit their numbers i'm not saying they're doing it because they're bad they're doing it because they're caught into this corporate mentality and what do they then do let's cut costs so then they'll cut the marketing department then they'll put a travel freeze on then they'll make sure that there's no spend on congresses these are all growth engines so you want double digit growth but you want to cut the heck out of all of the growth engines that make that double digit growth what kind of madness is this so what does that then mean why 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 does that then create the toxicity because what happens is you build this absurd pressure within the company it becomes a complete absurdity and everybody who's working knows we'll never hit that target we'll never hit that deadline this is stupid there's a detachment from reality from the managers and the managers put more and more pressure on and make more and more cuts. And you get into this horrible, horrible, vicious circle where it's cut, pressure, cut. And then people are human beings, right? So what happens? Toxicity creeps in. And it creeps in in many forms. But it generally starts with a little bit of finger pointing. And then the finger pointing becomes defensive it's not my fault it's their fault and it becomes blaming and there's a big difference between finger pointing and blaming saying look the, 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 the problem's over there and we need to fix that area is one thing saying it's their fault they're a bunch of idiots and they just can't fix it is another but what does this do it creates within the company a spiral of toxicity and i can tell you i've lived within these companies with this horrible insidious disgusting toxicity and i know there's a lot of companies out there that have still got it and there's really really good people who then underperform because they're tied up in toxicity rather than performing to the to the to the level that they need to do to hit these absurd numbers so again it becomes this vicious cycle where the toxicity brings top performers down and then top performers don't perform so the pressure gets higher so the toxicity gets higher and higher and there are cycles of this the cycles when things are okay but what i've seen in the last couple of years is that the cycles of toxicity have become more frequent and way 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 more toxic and damaging there are entire rafts of companies at the minute where I would say the majority of the employees are sick and tired of it. So what happens when the employees become sick and tired of it? Well, it multiplies that toxicity because they start infighting amongst themselves. And that's at the senior management level as well as the lower levels in the company. But you start getting infighting as well as up and down fighting. And that is so, so horrible. 
you wake up in the morning and I don't know if you get it but people dread opening their emails what's today's shit fest today what's the problem today what are we going to do today who's going to be upset today and those emails then span throughout the week and then there's usually a lull midweek when people are just trying to churn through their work and just really trying their best to get stuff done and then what happens is there's always a crisis from a Thursday afternoon through to a Friday. And then there's a crisis on the Friday and the toxicity leaks in and the phone calls start happening and the text messages start happening and it's crisis, crisis, toxic, toxic. And what happens is then people have a really shitty weekend because they're thinking about it and they're sat with the families and they're thinking about it. And that toxicity spills over then. And this is the big one into your own personal life and that should be the indicator for everybody if your work is being toxic if the environment is toxic that's not your family's fault don't bring that shit home keep that shit at work but fix it if you're in a super toxic environment i mean really toxic where it's damaging to your health and it's damaging to your mentality. You've got to get out of there. You have to get out of there. The alternative is that you really, really need to get together, group together as a team. And what you need to do is you need to either kill the toxicity or you all need to leave en masse. But there has to be a culture against the toxicity you can't allow the toxicity to happen it has to be documented in a formal and professional way maybe you all band together but you cannot accept that toxicity continues that is just going to be damaging for so many people now you might be strong right so you can take it but i've known many people in the last especially the last couple of years that have been really really damaged by the toxicity they've lost weight they look ill their demeanor, they were happy-go-lucky people. Now they're not at work. They just come in and go through the grind. It's, it's sad to see. So my advice is it starts at the top. And if you've got a toxic culture, it usually starts with the CEO. The CEO is probably quite a toxic person. And they'll give out their spiel and they'll do their monthly calls and they'll try and rally the troops and all that. But toxicity starts at the top. And if you're in a company where there is a toxic environment, hate to tell your CEOs, it's you. It's you. It starts with you. You're setting the figures too high. You're setting the deadlines too short. You're setting the workload too high. You're deciding to cut the people to hit the profit numbers that you're expecting. No, fight back. Be a good human being. Fight back as the CEO. And then your C-suite, your leadership team, they are responsible. One of the biggest roles that they have as human beings is to make sure that everybody is happy at work. Make sure that everybody's content at work. Make sure that there's an environment where people can feel safe. And there's an environment where people can actually enjoy what they do. If you look at the most productive companies, they're the ones where people love coming to work. They're the ones where they love opening their emails. They're the ones who, when they get a text message, even out of work hours, which you got a curb, by the way, but even if you get text messages out of work hours, they're not scared to open and think, oh, what the hell is this going to be now? Instead, what they've got to do is they've got to, the leadership team has to make an environment which is, you know, which is, make sure I don't get run over here as I'm saying this. So it's an environment where people are comfortable, happy, they enjoy turning up. And then what happens is that spiral reverses and then you start getting this massive camaraderie. And you've got to build that camaraderie. This is about a team. No individuals can, can build this on their own, but they can, one individual can destroy it on their own. So what you've got to do is you've got to, you've got to build that sensation that everybody has of really kind of loving coming to work. And that's on you as leaders. But it is also on you as anyone working in a company. 
because it's really easy for you to also perpetuate the toxicity. But if you don't stand for it and you don't participate in it and you don't add to it, then the place, it makes it easier to get out of that broken downward spiral. So everybody in the company, from the CEO all the way down to every single person who works in the company, has an absolute obligation to try and make that the best place for other people to come to work. And this brings me to my final point, which is there's no such really thing as, an, as a toxic company. A company doesn't exist. A company is a, is a brand, it's a company title, it's a set of buildings. The company and the culture of the company is built by the people in it, starting with the CEO and then working its way down often. But it's the culture of the people that are within that company. So what does that mean? That means that you all have a responsibility to build the culture that you want. And if you don't want a toxic culture, you have to fight against it. Now, if you're part of the problem, I can't help you. You've got to help yourselves. You've got to get out of that spiral of toxicity. You've got to help to make it. But if the company ultimately is run by a dictator who absolutely will not listen, who will not curb those insane growth targets, those insane profit targets, that insane cutting, maybe you need to leave that company because you do not want to stay around in a toxic environment. Trust me. <clears throat> I've been there and I've seen terrible, terrible things. And I've seen the terrible conversations at the sea level, just toxic, bullying, nasty, horrible things. And that's happening in too many companies, way too many companies. So my suggestion to everyone is try and change it, give the feedback, fight back, make sure that you try and raise the level of awareness over the toxicity. You've got to make sure that you don't contribute to the te toxicity. But ultimately, if there is just a group of nasty, insidious people that are in that company and there's just nothing you can do about it, even in your division, even in your small area, if you feel there's nothing you can do about it, then I think you've got to leave. And the reason for that is that you are worth way more than any job way more and you'll find jobs and there are lots of great companies out there with great cultures great fits that are not led by these kind of people they're led by really sensible ceos or really sensible c-suites that are not bullies that are not toxic so what you need to do your your kind of obligation is to yourself and to your family is that if there is that horrible toxic culture you've got to escape from it you have to escape from it. And there is always an escape. There's lots of great recruiters out there. There's more jobs out there than you can imagine, especially for good people. So my advice, my strong advice is don't tolerate it. Try your best to change it or curb it. But if not, then get out. And here's my warning to the CEOs. It's not 1990 anymore. The world doesn't work that way anymore. The new generation don't tolerate your shit anymore. So you need to up your games. You need to change your game. You need to make the places where you work the most amazing places to work. And if you don't do positive things every day, and I'm not on about, well, let's do, let's do a little survey and see how happy people are. That's just, no. You have to think about what makes this an amazing place to work? How do we, day by day, stop toxicity? How do you stamp out toxicity? And as a leadership team, one of the things that I'd say on my course is, if there are toxic elements, it doesn't matter how important they think they are, or the board think they are, or other people think they are, if they are toxic, they will destroy the company. It's like a cancer from inside the company. And that toxicity breeds toxicity. So as a CEO, your job is to make it an amazing place and cut out the cancer when that toxic cancer rears its ugly head. And it will. So that's it, guys. It's in your hands. You can stop the toxicity. 
you can complain about the toxicity, you can not tolerate the toxicity. If you're a CEO, you can change that. If you're a C-suite, you can make sure that there is no toxicity allowed to creep in. And if you're an employee of a company and that company has become toxic and you try to change it and it doesn't change, hit the eject button. Your mental health, your family's well-being, your well-being, your friend's well-being is worth a million times more. Why don't you make that your double-digit growth? Double-digit growth in happiness.